Yo, welcome to another never-ending conversation. Well, I guess it's the same conversation. If it's never-ending, that's the whole point. Anyway, if you haven't listened before, I talk about everything, a lot of dunking, but pretty much anything that interests me, which is everything. So I also just wanted to hit on one point today just because I don't have that much time and because I thought it was really important and pretty cool. And by the title of this, you already know what that is, and that is knee pain. Um... I don't think it's an actual secret, but I don't think many people know about it or really believe it, and I didn't either. And just to get right to it, it's uh, not eating wheat. Kind of like gluten is the same thing, but wheat in general, just because um, wheat is very processed the way we make it here. So if you you get your natural products like pasta, things like that, there's a lot of uh, highly processed wheat that has no nutrients and it's just bad for your gut lining and things like that. There's a lot more smarter people that explain why it's bad, but just know that that in, 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 on top of gluten, um, including gluten, those two things, they both can cause inflammation in all parts of your body, um, just inflammation in general. And I had knee pain from dunking for probably close to two years from when I started. Off and on, it got better, it got worse, but um, I was dealing with it for a long time, and uh, the only thing that helped was not eating wheat, and I knew it was an inflammation problem because um, just the way it felt, meaning when I would jump on it, that would make it worse. After a dunk session or after playing basketball, it would feel a little bit worse if I didn't use it and stretched it. Like if I didn't use it, stretched it, kept it warm and loose, then it feel, felt the best. But after a lot of impact and things that you would kind of common sense shows that it would cause inflammation, like pounding on it, jumping on it, things like that, that's when it would hurt the most and like sort of after I cooled down. So if I would jump on it a lot, then it would get like swelled up and stiff and get a little more painful. And I had knee pain for a while because um, when I first got it, it was debilitating, meaning I couldn't really jump on it at all. Um, I had to sit out for like a week or two um, just trying to rehab it because it hurt really bad to jump on it. Um, That was just one of my knees. And then once it got better, it was close to about like 80% healthy. I could jump on it. It would hurt, but not really hinder my jumping. I could still jump 100%. Um, And I was doing that for a long time and I got it really close to 100%. Like sometimes I would barely have pain, but if I would bend on it, I would feel it. But it went through phases of how much I'd feel it. So there'd be some days where I could bend my leg. um, So if I'm standing, if you're watching the video podcast, you get a little uh, preview. So if I'm standing on it and bent like this and pushing on it, I could feel it. But if it was straight and only bent like this much, the range of motion wasn't um, as painful. So the more I had more range of motion with less pain on some days, some days, any slight bend, I'd feel pain, but, um, I was stretching it really well. I learned a lot of stretches, like specifically the rectus femoris stretch, which I've said a million times. It's just a one part of your quad that doesn't get hit by the basic quad stretch. You have to push your hip forward. Um, I've posted that in other videos. Jump science has a great, uh, I'll link his website in the description. Um, He's got a great uh, description of what the muscle is and how to hit it and how to stretch it. But basically, it's like doing this quad stretch, but in a lunge type of form and pushing your hip forwards. That cures a lot of knee pain and helps a lot. And that helped me actually like instantly because that muscle gets neglected a lot. So that's what I was doing to kind of minimize the amount of pain I was having. But I was still having pain and I tried everything. I tried even resting, which is impossible for me. Um, meaning like a week or so without jumping, just straight rehabbing. And the rehabbing was really good. Like if I would not jump on it for a couple days and stretch all those days, get loose and get the blood flowing and stretch it a lot, it got pretty small, but it was always there. It never went away. And I thought I would never get it away. I thought I'd always have some kind of pain just because I'm always jumping and I might've damaged something. I might have like no cartilage left, but I thought it was just impossible And I was stretching really good, like deeper and deeper, pushing myself with stretching, just like I do in everything else, trying to get um, the range of motion as deep as I can with my hip flexibility because I was looking into maybe my hamstrings were tight, which they are, and that could cause, because everything's connected, that could cause the knee pain, hips, hamstrings, pulls on all your muscles throughout your legs, even from like your back. So my back was tight, everything. I tried everything, stretched everything, tried to get it. And I I did get it as best as I could, but it felt like I couldn't get that last piece out. And it just felt like 
even if I got it um, like 99% pain free, when I would go jump on it again, it would just come right back. And it wasn't bad. That's why I never complained about it. And I didn't think too much about it because I figured it was just there. It was just kind of damaged. The only way to go away is if I stopped jumping for like six months, which I'm never going to do. And I would let it completely heal up whatever's damaged in there. But um, this is what um, kind of confused me or puzzled me a little bit was I stopped eating wheat because I saw that documentary, What's With Wheat, I think it's called. It tells you all the dangers of wheat, all the uh, ca- like bad things, why it's bad than what it used to be. Basically, it's like we used to have wheat. It's not really a natural thing for humans to eat. And then on top of that, we modified it. I don't know if modify is the right word because there's a lot linked to the word modified. But we changed the way we produce it to make it a higher yield, produce more of it, and in a smaller place, a smaller surface area. I, I can't explain this, but you get the point. And by doing that, we removed a lot of the nutrients. Um, it makes it cheaper and it's just really bad for us to digest and things like that. So that's why there's been so much gluten sensitivity. It's not that people are getting more sensitive. It's that the way we're processing stuff, there's a lot more into it. So that being said, I think once I stopped doing that, stopped eating the wheat, and currently I barely eat it. I try really to stay away from it because it's just good for you in general. Um, you don't really need it. You can get carbs another way. I use a lot of quinoa and rice isn't as bad as wheat, but I still try to stay away from rice too. But there's carbs and other things. I don't even know all of them off the top of my head, but I just eat a lot of quinoa. I know that's good. And uh, so what I was saying was I stopped eating wheat and I literally have no pain in both of my knees because over time I had pain in both knees after just one being bad, the other one got bad and I had pain in both. And even on my best days, like say a best, best stretch would be like very minimal pain. I jump a little bit of pain, no big deal, stretch it. The pain pretty much goes away. But now I have, I had such little, t- I had literally no pain for so long not that long, but like three weeks to a month or something that I I actually forgot I had knee pain. I felt like it it just gradually got better. And since it wasn't that bad to begin with, it wasn't just like from extreme to extreme. It just, I, it slipped my mind that I'm like, oh wait, I don't even have any knee pain. And I just went to the gym just before this. Shout out Dunk Life. You can get this on dunklife.com, thedunklife.com or (laughs) dunklife.co. But I literally did uh, left, right jumping for those dunkers out there, which is like more left plant dominant, left leg dominant, which is uh, my bad knee, no pain. I did one foot off this leg, no pain whatsoever, and no pain now. Like if I do this, it doesn't even feel so, it doesn't even, I've never even done this, but for those watching the video podcast, I'm touching my knee and that used to be pain no matter what. Like I knew exactly what it was. It was like very um, common jumper's knee. It was like right in the common spot, which is like just below the uh, patella, whatever the hell it is. But um, that I used to be able to touch it and feel pain. Just very, just tenderness. It wasn't like pain like that much. It just felt like a constant bruise. But just now I'm touching it and there's literally no pain. And I'm, I'm just super excited about that. And I know a ton of people are uh, bothered by knee pain and looking for solutions. And stretching is great. Um, but definitely look into the diet. Try no wheat or gluten. It's very tough at first. It's definitely tough because it's like everything has it. I even check like the only, th- so I take protein bars. I just, for protein bars and a lot of things, I just go gluten free because some things have like traces of wheat. But if you take the majority out, I think you'll see a big difference because some things you just can't avoid. Like I need protein bars for the convenience and I'm always on the go. That sounds so weird, but I'm on the go and, uh, I need something easy that has, that's healthy for me, like a healthy snack that fills me up as well. And it'll say like wheat flour, but it's not wheat. It doesn't have like a ton of wheat. It's not, I'm not like eating bread. I'm not eating pasta, which are huge things of wheat. And I think you'll feel a big difference. And another thing I've noticed is after I stopped eating wheat for um, a few weeks, And then I tried to eat something with, it was like fried, it was like fried chicken with like the breading. It instantly hurt my stomach. And now when I have like really processed food, like healthy wheats are okay. Like I don't feel it that much, but if I have anything really processed wheat, my stomach really feels it. So I feel like my body's working correctly now and it doesn't have to fight with these um, alien type of products that we're not really supposed to be putting in our bodies. But um, I hope that makes sense. But just to recap, The inflammation can be caused by wheat because it damages your stomach. 
and I, I'm, again, I think this is correct, but anyway, I just know that it causes inflammation, but it damages your stomach lining because you can't digest it correctly, and then all these other problems arise, and you just don't have good circulation because of that, I think. And so the point is the wheat and the gluten can cause inflammation and a whole lot of other problems. So if you have any nagging problems, diet could be a huge thing because there's just so many different things that it could lead to and just... It's one thing that definitely has changed, and I, I was extremely skeptical, just like everybody who's probably watching this, listening to this. I didn't think it was really going to help. You don't really think that taking out bread or things like that really would affect your knees, and I still am skeptical, like maybe my stretching just got on point, but here's the counter argument to that, myself, talking to myself, is that... I stopped stretching. Like I used to stretch so much because I wanted to get that knee pain gone. And since it disappeared, I just kind of stopped stretching because I, I, there's no need to be doing these like meticulous painstaking stretches that are, I'm not flexible and they're really hard. I still stretch for other parts of my body, but like these stretches, they're not my priority anymore because my body feels really good. My body feels healthy. My joints feel healthy and I, I haven't been stretching. So at the point where my knee pain got away, I was still stretching. I'm like, is it the new stretching I'm doing? Because I'm learning more. I'm doing it harder. I'm pushing myself to stretch better. Or is it the wheat? And I didn't know which one it was. But now, after stopping stretching, which I should probably get back to just because it's healthy, um, it's got to be the wheat because, or the gluten, whatever you want to call it, because th- I have no pain. And I, I never really stretch. I haven't done that knee stretch, a specific rectus femoris one I said at the beginning. I haven't done that stretch in weeks. And I feel great. I just jumped off it like an hour ago, and it feels good. And I jumped off it, and even during the jumping, I didn't feel anything. It feels really good. Um, I've been a super inflexible person my whole life. I'm trying, to, um, I'm trying to combat that. But at the same time, it's good to be a little tight for jumping because I actually was going to the sauna so often that I feel like it loosened my body too much that I couldn't exert as much force. Like a rubber band, I feel like I stretched out the rubber band. So it's good to stretch to stay healthy, but I think I'm at a healthy point of flexibility. I could touch my toes. I could I have a good, healthy upper body and my legs are just a little bit tight, but I've got giant muscular legs. But, um, so they're pretty flexible, but, um, I don't need to be like a yogi master or anything like that to be healthy. I don't think I'm still looking into that, but, um, I just wanted to share that because it was really, um, beneficial to me. And I feel like so many people are suffering from the same knee problems that it could really help you as well. And I'll leave it at that. Um, Shout out to all my podcast viewers slash listeners. I'm going to start doing more podcasts, more video podcasts. I really, really enjoy doing it, especially things like this when I could share um, little things that help me that I realized that may be helping a huge amount of people. Um, I finally got set up in my little nook over here. If you're watching the video podcast in a new apartment. So hopefully this, I'm, it's still a mess in here, but I'm getting set up slowly, but surely. And these will be cranked out a lot easier and uh, more frequent. Um, that's pretty much it. So shout, shout out to the homies, shout out to the, everybody dunk life. Oh, like I said, if you want this they're on the website, there's socks, there's t-shirts. I got a t-shirt right here. So if you're on the video podcast, you're checking out the t-shirt right now. I love this shirt, but I'm not a t-shirt guy when I dunk, so I'm going to be cutting the sleeves off. Off. So that's it. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any experiences with, uh, with your uh, knee pains. And I'm telling you, try it, but it might take two to four weeks um, based on my zero medical training experience. I'm just saying it takes a little time to kick in, you know? But um, give it time. If it feels like inflammation in any of your joints, I'm telling you, the diet could be the cause of it because, uh, because it is. I don't know. Because we just, we're learning a lot more about these foods. And um, just eat healthy and take care of your body. And it is very important and it will help you. And it's good if you want to take care of your body to do everything you can. And the food is so important. I'm learning uh, now, not just like recovery. A lot of it is diet. I've never felt healthier. I've never felt more energized and it feels real. Like it's not just like a thing. I don't think I'm just getting better at sleeping or anything like that. I have more energy. I don't feel like my body's fighting with the food. It feels like I'm fueling it with the right fuel now and we're fueled up. And I'll end it with that. Was I like this for a little bit? I don't know. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for everything. 
Check out my YouTube. Check out my podcast. Share it. I love it. Um, oh, Twitter questions. I forgot. But um, I don't think anybody even tweeted at me since I said it. But if you do want to get questions answered, which I'll do on this podcast as well, tweet at me at Stevie Sally. All the links are below. And um, yeah, um, I like to answer questions on these because I feel like it's really helpful. Helps me get to a lot of people a lot faster instead of having to type and stare at my phone. So I'm out. Love you. See ya.